<laughs> We'd like to welcome the Chief Law Enforcement of the United States, the 86th Attorney General here to the Eastern District of Arkansas to provide guidance and to listen to the concerns of our law enforcement leaders who have each been working diligently these past several years to combat violent crime and to keep our community safe. Mr. Attorney General. Thanks, Jonathan. Thanks for the warm welcome here. Um, I'm very happy to be in Arkansas. Uh, I've come to talk to federal, state, and local law enforcement about progress in fighting violent crime. The people around this table are people whose agents are and officers and deputies are on the ground and are facing uh, uh, the risks uh, and dangers of every single day. And our job is to do everything we can to support um, your law enforcement um, and to reduce uh, uh, violent crime here. Um, I'm grateful for your participation and your, and your partnership because uh, partnerships uh, among our agencies are the only way we're going to solve this problem. I'm also grateful uh, for the chance to recognize the really great work of your office and of the uh, AUSAs in your office. Uh, people work very hard here and, and they do uh, really uh, tremendous work. Um, Three and a half years ago, the Justice Department launched an ambitious strategy uh, to combat violent crime. The strategy is rooted exactly in the kind of partnerships that are reflected around this table. Um, and while we know that uh, progress in too many places is still uneven and that there is no level of violent crime that's acceptable, we have been seeing results. Just earlier this week, the FBI released a report showing an 11.6% drop in homicides last year and one of the lowest violent crime rates nationwide in 50 years. Recent data indicates that this trend is continuing this year. Earlier this month, the Justice Department's Violent Crime Reduction Steering Committee announced new data from across 88 cities. It indicates that violent crime has continued to decline considerably in 2024. That included a further 16.9% drop in murders. But we know that we have so much more to work, more work to do here in Arkansas and everywhere across the country. That's why our, this office here and Justice Department is working in partnership with the agencies reflected around this table to arrest violent felons, to seize and trace guns used in crimes, to disrupt violent drug traffickers and prosecute the individuals and the gangs who are the most responsible uh, for uh, driving violent crime. For this office, that has meant working with the DEA, the FBI, and the North Little Rock Police Department to secure a 25-year prison sentence last month for Little Rock Man for distributing fentanyl, relating, relate, uh, resulting in a person's death. Also last month, this office worked with the DEA, the Arkansas State Police, the Saline County Sheriff's Office, and the Little Rock Police Department to secure a 15-year prison sentence for a defendant on fentanyl and firearms charges. In July, this office, together with the U.S. Marshal Service, U.S. Postal Inspection Service, secured the guilty plea of a man who threatened to assault and murder a United States judge and a federal law enforcement officer. Earlier this spring, this office worked with DEA, FBI, and the 2nd Judicial District Drug Task Force, and seven other state and local law, law enforcement partners as part of a large-scale enforcement action to charge and arrest 15 people on drug, money laundering and firearms offenses relating to the distribution of methamphetamine in Northwest Arkansas. In March, this office worked with DA, ATF, the Pine Bluff Police Department, and the Little Rock Police Department to secure a 30-year prison sentence for a man with a lengthy criminal record of domestic violence who was found guilty of being a felon in possession of ammunition. In October of last year, that man had shot his former girlfriend and then shot into the apartment where the victim and her young son were hiding. And in January, this office worked with ATF to secure a 20-year prison sentence against a man who had assaulted a victim after she ended their relationship. The defendant then set fire to her business after she changed the locks. During the sentencing, the victim told the court how hard she had worked to build her business as a single mother and spoke about the impact of the defendant's violence against her. This office treats victims with the greatest empathy and ensures that accountability for those who hurt them is achieved. In addition to using our investigative and prosecutorial resources to protect communities in this district, 
We are also committed to using our grant making capabilities to help resource the area. For example, today the Justice Department is awarding more than a million dollars in funding to the state under the DNA Capacity Enhancement and Backlog Reduction Program to enhance state laboratories' capacity to process DNA samples. And this week, we awarded more than $4 million to Arkansas under the National Criminal History Improvement Program, which provides funding to states and localities to improve the quality, timeliness, and immediate accessibility of criminal history records and related information. Today's grants are part of the more than $26 million that the Department is awarding to organizations and government agencies across Arkansas this month to support law enforcement activities and community initiatives. These funds will, among other things, help law enforcement agencies in Arkansas hire more officers, prevent and combat violent crime and drug trafficking, and improve services for survivors of domestic and dating violence, sexual <coughs> assault, stalking, and other crimes. We remain committed to providing our law enforcement and community partners with the resources they need to protect people across this district. The examples I've just shared are just a snapshot of the hard work this office is doing every single day to protect communities in the Eastern District and to fulfill the Justice Department's mission to keep our country safe, to protect civil rights, and to ensure the rule of law. I am very proud of the ser public servants of this office. I am equally proud of, proud of the relationships that they've developed with all of you and the relationships you've developed with them. Your work is indispensable to helping us, and our work is indispensable to helping you, and I'm grateful for your partnership. I look forward to our meeting. Thank you. All right, thank you everyone.